My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcasting, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns and Freedom. Here we go guys and girls, you're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K-Talks 1340 AM and also 104.1 FM. Do not forget, if you want to listen to the show on the internet, you can go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. This is the first hour, the hour normally we talk about freedom. What really freedom means? I mean, people, you know, say, you know, look, you go from different topics here. We go from very provocative things like conspiracy to politics. Exactly. It's all about freedom. First of all, freedom of speech, number one. I remind you, if you want to be on my show, I want you on, especially if we do not agree. If you agree, of course, that's great. So, but this is a platform that we can discuss all topics that normally, you know, in many other commercial stations, you're not allowed even to think. Seriously, the topics that I talk here on the air, uh, I know that 99.9% of other commercial stations will be probably being thrown out before even I can broadcast them. So that's the point. This is a great opportunity. That's why I want you here. More important, what I really believe about freedom is the fact if we live in a civil society, if we believe in a system where government is supposed to be accountable, the, 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 especially in America, okay? Because uh, that's the reality. That's the way this country was founded on, the republic. You know, representative republic, you know, non a democracy. It's supposed to be these people supposed to work for us, representing us. And what happens if they don't represent us anymore? What happens if they go rogue? It is our duty to keep them accountable. That's part of being free, or at least try to keep freedom going. Because if you completely submit, if you completely become like a zombie, you know, just somebody doesn't care anymore, you're just a slave. That's my real think about that. So much that myself, a few years ago, uh, when it was about Mojave County uh, infringing on my rights, when it came down to First Amendment, I was the first one to propose uh, a recall for one of our supervisors. Regardless that we were a couple hundred, uh, hundreds of, of signatures short, doesn't matter. That was for me the most important thing I believe I've done as an American because I really believe to show that uh, these politicians, they are not gods, and regardless of the odds, we still have the right, and we have the duty, in my opinion, to fight back peacefully, of course, uh, in this way, in this political process, let them know that we don't agree with their ideas, and if we think they've done something wrong, we need to at least expose them to the public. Now, let me bring a lady that I've really been following her uh, the last uh, few years, and it's uh, funny because beside politics, we have a lot of things in common, you know, she likes my type of poetry, and that's another story, but she's a great lady, I really like her, enjoy her Facebook friends, friendship, but now today, uh, really, I want to bring her as a political activist. And when I say political, it's not just an abstract concept. It's something about very practical. It's about your money. It's about your freedom. It's about your rights. And she lives in Kingman, uh, Kingman, Arizona. And she has some personal, not personal, but political issues with uh, the mayor. Let me bring her in. Tanya, Tanya Smith, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing, Tanya, first of all? I'm doing really good today. Very good. Let, briefly, I know that you are not new to politics. Uh, you have been uh, involved in politics. Uh, as I said, politics is not an abstract concept. It's pretty much how we can keep our freedoms and our money. But exactly what you've been doing in your past uh, as a political, you know, uh, activist, you know, you've been running for office, anything like that? Um, yeah, actually, back in 2009, you know, I moved here to Kingman in 2008, and in 2009, I got involved with the Republican Party here, um, got involved with the Republican women's groups, and actually became a PC, a precinct, precinct committeeman, to go around and help register voters. Uh, in 2010, I started the Kingman Teenage Republicans here, because I was actually shocked when I found out we did not have any teenagers involved in the party. And so I got them up and running and active, and we've just been involved in all of the different things, the elections and stuff going on in the area. 
Okay, that's good. I remember that because at the time I used to be a Republican myself. And I remember you at the meetings and things like that. And sometimes, you know, as I said, we agree. Sometimes we don't agree. It doesn't matter. I always respected you because at least even when we didn't agree, you were always polite and always, you know, at least firm to your principle. That's what I like. You know, I like people up front, not people that stab you in the back. Now, talking about backstabbers, and I'm speaking for myself, of course. I'm not speaking to you, but uh, about you, for you. Talking about the mayor of Kingman. I really have a bad feeling. Every time I hear the name Kingman City, I got like chills on my back. And unfortunately, you know, I have to go through Kingman many times because I do business, I go shopping mostly there. And I even, you know, even I don't, I'm not the resident of the city of Kingman. I really am shocked how a city like Kingman is supposed to be the most conservative, let's say, district in Arizona. At least Moab County is supposed to be a very conservative area. It's the most uh, high spending taxes, you know, completely. It sounds like California. Probably, I think, many Californians just move here. So they always want more money. They already raised uh, the uh, sale tax. It's supposed to be permanently. And now this month, for what I understand, they want to maybe increase it more. Uh, I know that you're trying to do a recall. Am I right or wrong? Yes, I am actually doing a recall of Mayor Monica Gates. I um I formed a committee called Karma, the Kingman Association, to recall Mayor Monica Gates, and mm. we officially filed the paperwork on Tuesday with the city to do exactly that to get her get her behind, clean out of that office because she the things that she is doing is so so grossly negligent to the citizens of this king of the city. And can you give more details? Because you know, it must be a serious reason why. I mean, recall it's a big effort, and also must be justified normally. I really believe by something, not just a minor issue, must be some big issue. What do you think, uh, according to you, Mayor? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Monica? What I forgot. Gates, Monica Gates. Gates. Yeah, Monica Gates done wrongly, or what she didn't do right. Uh, well, the three charges that we brought against her are the most serious right now that I've got going on. Um, the first has to do with the Kingman Airport Authority and just how corrupt it is. Uh, as a lot of people in the area know that there's been major issues with the airport for a long time and the citizens have been screaming and screaming for the city to bring those assets that belong to the citizens of Kingman back under the control of the city of Kingman so that we can finally get it, you know, get the repairs done. There, there's giant cracks in the runway and they got all this money coming in and they don't seem to be putting any of that money into the airport and they're running off companies the this area is terrible for jobs right now and unemployment is unbelievably high and they're running companies off and not bringing them in well when mayor monica gates when she was running to become mayor she promised the citizens that she had this that she was going to do that she was going to bring the the airport back under their control and, and get something done, find out what's going on, open up the airport's books and find out what's going on with all that money because they refused to do it. And then as soon as she got elected, she completely did a 180 turn tail, started blocking all the city councilmen who were trying to do exactly that. Wow. Blocking them from doing it. Uh, she, she made up these crap meetings that they were going to have where they were going to supposedly give information to the public. And all those did was denigrate into a thing where they're just insulting the citizens of Kingman, calling them angry mobs, and that they're not being clear on what they want when, I mean, I thought the citizens were pretty clear. We want runways without cracks in it. We want jobs in this area. We want the, the repairs made to the terminals and stuff going on over there, and we want some damn money coming in. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty clear, but apparently she just closed her ears to all the citizens at those meetings and ignored what they had to say. The yeah. uh, second issue we have with her is misappropriation of funds. Mm. Um, she's hiring, she hired a bill pupil to facilitate these meetings with the KAA. Now, the agreement was supposed to be supposedly the city of Kingman would pay half and the Kingman Airport Authority would pay half for these meetings. Yet the city council to this day, the council themselves, have not been provided with a contract for this man. They've not been given a dollar amount on what they're supposed to pay. There's rumors flying around that he ended up being paid for by one of the board members, a Crystal Burge, out of her own pocket. But we don't know for sure because, again, the city council, even though they've requested it, have not been given any information on this. Well, when you try to do research on Bill, Bill Pupil, we can't find any kind of con um, company that he works for 
to actually be consulting with us. So the only thing we have to rely on is that he's a friend of hers. Hmm. She gave a friend of hers a contract with the city for an unspecified dollar amount that the citizens have no idea what they're paying, and that's just completely unacceptable. Then the third major issue is he's just come out recently and has to do with Kingman Crossing. Now, the citizens of Kingman have been clear for many years. They have wanted the Kingman Crossing built. They've wanted these interchanges because it'll bring in jobs. It'll take traffic off of 66 and Andy Devine, which are tore up really bad from trucks. You know, it will benefit the citizens a great deal, Kingman Crossing. Um, And they were supposed to get that done. Well, she started in May the mayor did, secretly meeting with KRMC. Now, for those that don't know, KRMC, for the last, gosh, eight years, I want to say, has fought to keep Kingman Crossing from happening. And the reason was is because we had another hospital that came into the area Mm -hmm. that was located right over there, and KRMC wanted to put them out of business. And so they fought. They fought like hell to keep Kingman Crossing from going forward. Uh, and they were successful. It ended up putting that hospital out of business. Pre- hundreds of people lost their jobs. And what did KRMC do? Go right in, swoop up that land and bought it themselves. And now all of a sudden they want to help get Kingman Crossing built. Mm. But they want to do it at the expense of the citizens. The proposal that the mayor has to have K- um, KRMC actually fund building these um, interchanges would be that they would sell the citizens' land because that land is owned by the citizens of Kingman. Wow. And they authorized the city to sell it at the last election. They will sell the land to Kingman or to KRMC. KRMC would then build the interchanges. But in order to do that, they have to declare that whole area as a slum and blighted, which would kill all of the homeowners there who actually have really nice homes and very nice neighborhoods over in that area, it would absolutely devastate them. And the reason for that is because they want to declare it a consolidated business district so that KRMC could then turn around and lease the land back that we sold them, then force the citizens to lease back that land using taxpayer dollars and stuff and give them huge tax breaks. Wow. You know, and that's just, yeah. That's, it, there, there's no way I, I filed the next day for, to recall her. But you know, I'm very proud of you, I must tell you, because uh, the problem is that many people don't get involved. They think uh, nothing we can do. Just, uh, you know, I'm just a person. That's exactly what they want you to think. Uh, I really believe that the power of the individual is much more than we can imagine. And even if sometimes we feel the odds against us, it doesn't matter. It's a principle to show that at the end of the day, we still have to do what we have to do. It is our right, it also is our duty. And you know what? That sometimes things uh, like empire start to crumble. It starts from the maybe that uh, individual racing, uh, rising, excuse me, uh, his head up and uh, other people may follow. And now I wanna be fair here because you know, many of my, sh- my listeners, uh, normally, especially on the internet, getting more and more listeners from around the world, Australia, England, Scotland, Germany, so what do you really care about this, what's going on in Kingman? Well, let me tell you guys, this is exactly the example that we need to inspire each other because it, today can be called Kingman. Tomorrow could be called Rome, Italy, or could be Hamburg, uh, Germany. It is, uh, of course, in America, we have rights uh, in our constitution, Bill of Rights, that as much as they're trying to destroy them, we have another type of DNA, another type of rights that many other countries don't have, even called freedom of speech. And that's very important. I mean, you, you start to go out in Italy and start to call a politician's name, you get arrested, okay? That's the point, so be, be sure. But the point is this principle is the same. Uh, as a citizen, as a individuals, as human beings, we have the right to express ourselves. And more important, if you want to make changes, you gotta get involved. Don't think that Captain America is coming out of the blue, is gonna do it for you. You gotta look at yourself in the mirror tonight. Hey, if you wanna do something, you better start to uh, stand up and do your side. So that's why I say this is an inspiration also for my listeners around the world. They say, guys, uh, corruption happens anywhere, everywhere. And it's our duty to at least uh, face it and expose it. Let's start with that. And hopefully enough more people, they're gonna get involved and we will fix it. Now, you know, say, Tanya, I tell you, I, I always had a bad feeling about Kingman, as much as I like many of my friends, they live there, of course. But when it comes down to politics, I say, how is that possible? There's something supposed to be a conservative uh, town, at least in a conservative district, 
there's such liberal spending and you know i don't even use the word liberal anymore because it's not about liberal republican they're spending as much as the democrats there is no difference really but really this is a new level I, are you aware of the new taxes the new sale tax that they want to completely approve i think they approve it it's almost 10 yep. percent. am i right it's not 10 percent it's only it's one cent Okay, no, but no, it's one cent for no, every dollar. No, I know, but what is um, the final? Yes, they actually did approve it the other day. But what is the final the total of the sale tax? Because it started from uh, was permanent to eight point something. Now, how much is it? The real, the final sale tax. No, the city of Kingman sales tax was at two point five. Okay, but the total. Uh, now with the new increase, it yeah. now goes up to three point five. Yeah, and when you add it up with the state, how much we got here? Uh, with the state, I couldn't tell you. Oh, right now, I, um, I, I know the city one because I, I was there I the other day when they increased the yeah. But my point is, the tax rate. at the end, is when you go pay for anything you know that is uh, taxable. Uh, right now, we have one of the highest in the state. That's the bottom line. We, I think, uh, we almost uh, beyond uh, above nine percent. That's the point. Uh, so we're getting all together between state and and city tax. It, this is this is serious. I mean, it's getting a lot of money. I mean, at the end of the day, for the average person out there, every time you buy something, it's going to add up. And more important is the principle. They are liars, and I'm speaking for that. It's not your words, because they said that the other increased tax that we had for the last couple of years or whatever, supposed to be per uh, not permanent, just momentarily, okay? And then, not only they didn't remove it, they're increasing it. So they're lying, number one. And number two, it's never enough. For government, it's never enough. It's always about more money, more money, more money. It's like a, you know, they treat us like a cow, and when we're bleeding, there is no more milk coming out of us. Probably they give us a break when we are dead. That's why I really feel disgusted, just because of this issue. And I even didn't know about all the other things you were talking about. So that's really, really sad, you know, as I say. But uh, I'm glad you're standing up. Uh, you see any type of good uh, response? Other citizens getting involved? About this, uh, uh, yes, actually, I, I've had a great response from it. You know, and as you know, you've been involved. You, you, your recalls generally don't do too well, um, and that's why I've always been against them. Because from the beginning, I've always felt, you know, we have an election. That's the citizens speaking. You, you live with it. There's always going to be another election. But this time, the the stuff she's doing is just so grossly negligent that it's just I. To protect the citizens, we have to recall her. We have to get her out of there because everything she's doing is going to hurt families. It is going to hurt people, and I can't allow that. Wow. I have to stand up against that. Wow. Um, uh, did and you so, yeah, we're getting a really great response. I've got the, the petitions are out in circulation. We've got maybe a couple hundred right now already in just a few days hmm. uh, because, like I said, you know, people are starting to get involved more. They're noticing this when their lives are actually at stake and their livelihoods, they, they really start to pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, I wish they actually paid attention more and stuff, but I'll take what I can get. Yeah. Uh, and so they're doing, we're doing really good with it right now. I, I really do feel like we may be successful in this one and we may actually get to the number of signatures we need. You know what is a good thing? Because this is a city recall, you know, county, we have such a big county here. And uh, when we did, uh, for example, Supervisor Sock, well, it's a huge area to cover. And it's very tough. Okay, Mojave County, it's huge. But city, since everything is yeah. more condensed and uh, you don't need to keep driving for miles and miles to get a signature, I think you may have a great chance. I really believe. But regardless, I like the fact that you at least not being silent and you're doing what you can. Uh, did you ever have a chance to talk to her uh, directly? Say, by the way, you know, I don't like what you're doing and I think maybe we should have a conversation about that. Did you attempt that? No, actually, I didn't. Usually, I do. Usually, I'll go up, you know, as most of the supervisors and stuff know, they all have known me pretty well. I have yelled at every single one of them many times over so. Um, but with her, I didn't, and it's primarily because of the way that she's responded to the citizens. Mm. You know, I, being involved, I actually pay attention to this stuff, and I watch how they interact. You know, and every time a citizen has gone to her and, and tried to express that they're having problems, Mm. They get yelled at. They get demeaned. She she does newspaper articles calling them angry mobs, and it's just I'm not going to even bother with that. Wow. I've seen enough to know we're not going to get anywhere. Me and her personally sitting down. She's not going to change what she's doing because she's trying to keep it all hush hush as it is mm. and stuff. And so it's just like no, I'm just going to do this. Well, as I said, that is this is good. I really believe it. This is also the freedom of. Uh, 
of, of our country that I really believe we want to keep alive. Uh, these politicians need to be reminded every time that they are not completely gods and there's still accountability out there because citizens can get involved. Listen, one more time, please, uh, Tanya, give the address information, how people in Kingman can uh, contact you, get involved with you, and help you out. Okay, well, we've got, a, we've got an email address. It's karma, K-A-R-M-M-A, at hotmail.com. And they can also call my home telephone number. It is 928-530-5379. Anyone that wants to be able to sign the petition or wants to help get them out and get signatures on them can either email or call, and I will get them all the information so they can do exactly that. Very good. Listen, I thank you, and keep me posted, please. And by the way, if uh, the mayor, of course, never would come on my show, probably I'm not that good enough for her. But regardless, I really have an open microphone for everybody, and I always would like to give uh, the other side the opportunity to defend their position. This is a, a show that we have complete freedom of speech, and more important, we keep everything civil. So I'd be happy in case uh, the mayor listen to the show, uh, even if she may not like me or not, I'll be polite, of course, and I would like to have her on my show and bring her topics or whatever her points, okay? That's the bottom line. Thank you, Tanya. Keep you posted, okay? Keep, keep me posted too, please. I absolutely will, Luca. All right, very good. Now, ready for the second part of the first hour, we have my friend Cam Mich from Michigan. We are going through some very important news. As I said, you know, we go from local news to national news to uh, international news. Doesn't matter. Freedom does not know boundaries. We are all under danger. Uh, you're listening to Love Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna. Do not go away. Hey, you. Yes, I'm talking to you. You deserve a break. Enjoy a moment of indulgence. It's time for Zanna Coffee. Guilt-free pleasure. Zanna Coffee is the organic coffee to amplify your senses and enhance love for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Only the best organic and GMO-free coffee beans from around the world that I selected. Zanna Coffee brings you happiness in every cup. Fair trade certified sustainable organic coffee. That means we do not use slaves. Free Zanna songs with every coffee bag. Find Zanna Coffee at www.zannacoffee.com. www.zannacoffee.com. Get your coffee bag now. Don't be cheap. Life is too short and you deserve the best. Zanna Coffee. Okay, we are back. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna on KTOX 13.40 a.m. and also United States to the FM Network. Uh, don't forget, if you want to listen to all the past shows and also to the show...